where we left off in the last video, we are looking at the, the Pixabay license and what it allows you to do and what it doesn't allow you to do. It also doesn't allow you to have any recognizable trademarks, logos, brands, basically things that are on Pixabay but shouldn't be on Pixabay, right? So we're going to be learning about all of that. But if you see it in Pixabay, the, the main reason I love this site is that every source that's on there has not only been uh, vetted by human beings for quality, they are also high resolution. So if I go to download, you'll see that you can download these at over a thousand by a thousand pixels, which is the threshold for the images we need for this assignment. We could also even download this as a vector, but I'm not going to do that for this assignment. So I'm going to click on that on the highest pixel resolution option it gives me under download, and I'm going to say download. And then where is it going to go? It's going to go to this downloads folder because it didn't give me an option of where to put it. So it goes into our junk drawer, which is right next to your, your recycle bin. And there it is. And then I can just drag it to my desktop. And I can hit function F11 to clean away my desktop. That's the first example of something that's high quality. It's over a thousand by a thousand pixels. It doesn't have any watermarks. It relates to my theme. It's a good potential asset for me to use. I can do it with this other one. Download something more than a thousand by a thousand pixels. Download it. Goes to my downloads folder. Drag it to my desktop. Function F11. If I want to get a closer look at them, I can just double click them and open them in preview. And I can see the actual pixels, right? which should be well larger than your screen. Right? So the whole image should be sharp and in focus beyond the size of your screen, if it's good enough for what we need for this project. OK, but that was about all Pixabay had right, in terms of line art. And then it had some stuff that was colorful. So what if instead of saying line art, I just say Aztec? So if I skip the banner of stock images that it's selling to me, and I scroll to the bottom, now I've got five pages, 466 images total, but most of them are photography. Some of them are line art. So I might right click on this and say open link and new tab. But what if I didn't want to have to scroll through all of this and right click and open link and new tab? What I can do is I can go to the limiting options here. So whenever you do an image search, a big part of digital image mining is knowing kind of how to qualify the search. So you're only seeing things that you want to see. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the color to only black and white and then apply. And then sure enough, almost all of these are very useful. It's only one page, but it's a lot more than I got when I actually used the word line art. I like this one. I like this one. And I can steal more, more than a, I shouldn't use steal. I can use <laughs> as an asset more than five, but five is the minimum. And then I go to download and I find the largest size that's not a vector that's over a thousand by a thousand and I download it. Now I'm showing you this because when you try to download the largest size, even though the second to the largest size is as long as it's more than a thousand by a thousand, that's big enough for what we need. But if you ever try to download the larger size, it will say you have to sign in first. And I'm going to encourage you guys, I'm not going to require it as long as you can get assets that are a thousand by a thousand, but I'm going to encourage you to just use your email and sign in to Pixabay. I just use my Gmail and they've never sent me any spam. But what's nice about that is then I'm able to download the largest sizes as well. The other thing is if you become, if you sign in and you donate 10 images or more, you don't see ads anymore. So that's nice.
but I'll keep downloading these. And then once they, remember they go to your downloads folder, I just move them to my desktop. So I have a lot of good options here. I'm not trying to decide which ones I'm going to use yet, though I do like this one. I'll never require you to join any service, but this is a, a pretty good site to utilize. But you can always download up to the the second to the largest size without having to sign in. All right. So I think those are all the ones I want to get from Pixabay. Let's see the Google images. In the same way that I limited my search results from Google images, I can use tools to limit them in or in Pixabay, I can use tools to limit them in Google Images. So first of all, I'm going to limit them by size because a lot of these Google Images are not high enough resolution. So to get something that's over a thousand by a thousand, I need to choose large as a size. So under tools in Google Images, I'm going to choose size and I'm going to click on large. And that way, oops, it will only show me things that are at least a thousand by a thousand pixels. But that doesn't mean that they're going to show me things that don't have watermarks, right? And we want line art that's not marred by, by watermarks, even though we could get rid of those watermarks. So how do I know how many pixels it is? If I open it up, it will tell me in the little corner in the preview image. And that's not quite right because it's only 720 pixels large. There'll be a lot of YouTube like screenshots from this. But this one, this one is large enough. If I wanted to use that, this one is large enough. So once you see the preview, what I like to do is to right click on it and then say open image in new tab. This is how I quality check it before I save it to my desktop. Because Google Images is not vetted by human beings. So this could have watermarks in it that I couldn't see smaller, or it could be really out of focus and a poor quality image, but this isn't. This is a really high quality image. Even though it's copyrighted, I'm going to add that to my options on my desktop, and I can just drag and drop it right to my desktop. This one's pretty cool, especially for the year of the dragon, but, and it's so close to a thousand by a thousand pixels, but if I say open image and new tab and look at it at full size, you'll see the, the watermarks. And we also want images that are free floating. So we don't want to choose images like this that are cropped because like Arturo Herrera, we're trying to make work that is free floating, you know, from every angle. Like these past examples that aren't just filling a rectangle, for instance. This one's cool. It's 2,000 by 2,000 pixels. If I open an image in a new tab, yep, that looks good and clean. Save it to my desktop. Okay, there is another option you can use, which is in your linked in your course outline, but it's called Google Auto Draw. And it's funny because people call this AI now. But this is so much older than all the, the generative AI. None of it's AI. But what this was is that early on, Google had all these experimental sites. And this is one that they've kept running for about a decade. And this was basically to help people play Pictionary. So they have what's called the auto draw pencil. And if I draw with the auto draw pencil and I draw, you know, a Pictionary thing, a paintbrush, right, it will immediately guess what I was trying to draw. Did you mean to draw that? Right. And so what it did is it actually paid illustrators like myself to make these images. So you'll see they're in lots of different styles. <laughs> some are very clean. Some are a little bit funkier. 
Um, but all of these are Creative Commons open. All of these are, are open for anyone to use for any purpose. And I can make them black. Right. So it's kind of an interesting way of doing line art. And you can obviously click them and delete them if you need to. So what's something that's good for the Aztecs? I mean, that's pretty complicated. But let's say I wanted like a crown on top of a jaguar. So I can move the crown around and then I can use the auto draw pencil and I could try to draw a jaguar. And the more I draw, the more it will kind of guess what I'm trying to draw. Right. And they have a tiger. Let's see, I can use the scroll. They have cats. But you can do very kind of rudimentary compositing here. Where you can do multiple line art images and you can even distort them somewhat and then you can move them together you can rotate them you can use your arrows and i can kind of line them up right now if i wanted to use some of this how do i download it you can click here and you can say download and it will go to your downloads folder and you just save that to your desktop. So that was our form of image mining. What is the difference between all three of them? If you do Google image search, I'll look for an Aztec coloring book this time. And I use tools to limit its size to large and try to find images that are only a thousand by a thousand. The problem is most of these are copyrighted and are of varying quality, but there's millions of results unless your search is really, really specific. So another way I can limit them is by color and I can just do black and white and I can even limit them by type and just do line drawings. And I can even limit them by usage rights and say Creative Commons license instead of copyrighted materials. But that is going to severely limit most of what I get, right? So now I've managed to make a Google image search. There's only one page of it, right? And not all of it relates, though it was all tagged with Aztec at some point. And then what do I do? I right click it. I say open image in new tab so I can look at it fully. And then I can save it to my desktop. The other thing is this is going to give you different types of files. So I just saved that one and it came in as what's called a, a web photo file. You can see it. If I open it up in preview, it says locked. This is a way to protect images. So in order to use it, I need to convert it in preview and I need to export it as a PNG to the desktop. And it will make a copy of it that I will be able to composite with. Web photos were, were big about two years ago. And here's the other problem. It looks like it's clean line art, but that grid that's in there, because this was actually stolen from a video and then put online by someone, that grid that's in there that means empty pixels is actually a grid made of pixels that I'll have to get rid of. And it's got the little video button on it. But I would have to get rid of these to use it as just clean black line art. But I'll show you how we can do that. We have that ability. So Google Images comes with some kind of pix uh, pitfalls that Pixabay won't come with and that Google AutoDraw won't come with. But you'll get some interesting examples like this. This is someone's work from DeviantArt. 